What's up, y'all? Real John King here again. Hey, I want to do a local story right now. This story took place right here in Akron, man. Um, this story also has to do with CP time. And in case some of y'all don't know what that means, uh, that's that stands for colored people time. Now, um, this is a classic case of colored people time because the show that I did was, uh, like I said, here in Akron over on Arlington Street. I can't remember the name of the club. This is a club where younger people hung out at. And at the time I did the show, man, I was probably in my late 40s, mid to late 40s. And I wasn't really hanging out at no clubs. If I wasn't working, I wasn't uh, going to any clubs. So um, there was a local uh, promoter uh, named Royal. I don't know Royal's last name, but I know he was one of the few brothers that, that uh, reached out to me when I wasn't doing a lot of uh, shows on the road and I was running a business here in town locally. And so I had a lot of um, weekends and evenings on my hand where I could do some local shows. Anyhow, this was a uh, supposed to be a comedy show. And the people on the show with me was uh, my nephew, uh, Marlo Hill, AKA Jug Knight. Also another local comic named Yo Simply Sam. The three of us was booked uh, to do this show over here, man, on the east side at this club. And the uh, show was supposed to start at, I think, 7 o'clock or 7.30. So uh, Royal had us to show up early, you know. We came over there around 6.30 in the afternoon. And um, we was waiting around for some people to come in. It got to be 7, 7.30. Nobody showed up. I noticed, too, that the uh, people that was uh, working at the club, they were uh, prepping and preparing, preparing some meat to be cooked. I guess they was gonna sell, well, I don't guess, I know they was gonna sell some food later on that night. I think they was preparing it for their regular crowd that came in later. And um, it got to be about eight, 8.30 I'd say, still no people showed up for the show. So we, we just kind of hung around some more, man. And to, the thing about this whole situation is, man, we watched them, we sat there, we watched some people prepare some meat. We watched them go out on the side of the building through the side door and they had a barbecue grill. They, we watched them cook the meat and it got to be 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock before people actually started coming in. And we watched them actually start selling uh, some food before that show started. And I don't think that show started until about 10, maybe 10.30. And when the crowd came, they came, man. That place got packed real quick. So Marlo hosted the show that night. He went up and uh, did a good job. The crowd was real responsive to what he did. Then um, Sam went up. He did his thing, man. He had a good show. Then um, I went up and closed the show. And I have to say one thing about that crowd, man. Once we did get the show going, man, that was a very responsive crowd, man. They gave it up, man. There was a lot of energy in that room, man. One thing about black people, man, if they dig what you're doing, they're going to give it up, man. And they showed up and they showed out that night, man. I mean, we ended up doing it on CP time, but we got it done. And um, I'm glad that Royal, um, you know, had me to come over there and do that show, man, because uh, a lot of times I, say I did shows out of town. I didn't get a chance to do local shows a whole lot. And... I have to say one thing about the uh, local crowd here in Akron, man. Um, the folks, uh, the people here, when they show up for a show, man, they come to laugh and have a good time. And they always, uh, they always give it up, man. Uh, I think Akron has some of the better crowds as far as uh, understanding and responding to comedy. Because they'll take it either way you give it to them, man. You can be clean, you can be dirty. As long as the shit's funny, they're going to give it up. So if you're out there, Roy, I appreciate you reaching out to me, brother. And um, I know the budget wasn't that big, but hey, I was able to get up there and do a show, man. I was get to, I was able to do a show locally in front of my hometown crowd, man. So uh, I'll be able, I will be forever grateful for you, brother, for uh, bringing some um, local um, comedy shows to the uh, area. Like I said before. I did a couple other shows for Royal. I know I did one for this church. I did a church fundraiser, which once again, the crowd was, they were very responsive. I had a real good time with that uh, 
uh, audience. It was over on the east side. It was, uh, I can't think of the name of the church. I just know it was on the east side. And then I did another show over on the east side. It was, there was a car wash there on, uh, man, I can't think of the name of that street. It was off of Arlington, too. They had a uh, club over this car wash, man. Once again, man, uh, that crowd was, uh, they were young, but they gave it. They gave it up, man. They showed a brother so much love, man. And uh, after, I'm gonna be honest. I was a little bit nervous when I first uh, was on this show for these people at the car wash, man, because I didn't really know what to expect. But in the end, man, um, I got way more love and way more than what I expected, or what I thought the show was gonna be. That just shows you can't never always judge a book by the cover, man. Once again, for the people in Akron. I really appreciate y'all because anytime I do a show, I always uh, have a, a nice crowd there, man, and they always give it up for me. So that's it for that. I got some more local stories I'm going to tell, but that's it for that one right there. So take care. I'll on the next random road story.